Well, we have some breaking news now. The Assembly of First Nations has voted to remove their National Chief Roseanne Archibald from her position. First Nations leaders have just wrapped up a meeting deciding her fate. It follows a workplace investigation that concluded she had harassed and retaliated against staff. And it puts an end to a dispute that began last June when four of Archibald's senior staff filed bullying complaints against her. For more on this, let's bring in the CBC's Olivia Stefanovic. She is following this breaking news story for us from Ottawa. She joins us now live. Olivia, how did the Chiefs come to this decision? Well, Natalie, this was not an easy decision for the Chiefs and Assembly to make. In fact, they were asked to decide uh, Roseanne Archibald's fate last year when these bullying and harassment complaints first surfaced, but they decided to reinstate her. She was initially suspended, so they decided to reinstate her and give her another chance. And the issue has just been deferred to one meeting and then to the other. And then finally, today, the Chiefs and Assembly decided to finally vote in favor of ousting her. And this was an overwhelming uh, majority of chiefs who decided this, Natalie. Seventy-one percent of chiefs and assembly who were attending this private virtual meeting, which was held over Zoom, voted in favor of ousting Archibald. And this comes after four of Archibald's senior staff members filed bullying and harassment complaints against her. A fifth complainant then came forward, who was the AFN's CEO at the time. She has since resigned. And this workplace investigation, it just completely overshadowed the National Advocacy Organization's agenda for the past year. And not a lot of work was able to be accomplished at these meetings that the chiefs attend, uh, biannual meetings, um, because of this issue, Natalie. So finally, a decision today. And now the, the Assembly of First Nations has to decide who they can appoint as interim national chief and they will have to have another election. So Olivia, when it comes to reaction, what are you hearing? Well, there are certainly mixed reactions. So far, we are hearing um, some some reaction in support of Archibald. She has a lot of supporters, and there are a lot of observers as well who say this process was simply unfair. The meeting to, to decide whether she stays on as national chief, which was held today, was held again in private over Zoom, and chiefs had to receive a private link in order to be able to vote. So a lot of people see this as being done in secret, and they also say that this would not happen if Rose Roseanne Archibald was a male national chief. So a lot of people feel that way. But at the same time, we heard from chiefs today in this meeting who say that they supported Archibald. They liked her vision, but they did, did not like the fact that this workplace harassment investigation was hanging over the assembly. And they say at the end of the day, she has to treat staff properly and that all of this was just overshadowing shad shadowing the assembly and it had to come to an end, Natalie. The CBC's Olivia Stefanovic in Ottawa for us with the breaking news. Well, for more on this, I want to bring in Carrie Benjo. She is a longtime Indigenous journalist and owner now of the editor and Eagle, sorry, owner and editor, I should say, of Eagle Feather News. She is also a member of the Muscopeting Soto First Nation. She joins us from uh, Regina tonight. Carrie, thank you for making the time here. The AFN just voted to oust Rosanna Archibald from her position as national chief. What's your reaction to that development? I'm actually not surprised by it. Um, she went through this last year and again this year, and it has just been so much infighting. The optics of the of the organization have been lost. There, there is not a good end to this. Um, two years in, she's faced she's faced um, impeachment twice. She's finally been removed. Um, it's a really sad day because. This organization, when she came in, there was so much hope. You know, as an Indigenous woman, there was so much hope for what she was going to bring to the position. And it's just been a stalemate, um, a butting of heads. She was elected because of her platform. She wanted to clean up the organization, um, be more transparent. And it just seemed like there was so much resistance to what she was doing. And um, there was not much that could be accomplished given the situation. You know, you, you mentioned how much she was celebrated when she was first elected. She broke that glass ceiling, the first female, the woman, first woman to hold that position. How do you think that factors into the conversation here? I think that that plays a very significant role. Like, like you said, this has been 
predominantly a male organized male led organization and she is the first indigenous woman to be elected into the position she's not the first to run for national chief there have been others before her but she has finally made headway and i'm hoping that the next national chief um whether it's a, a, ma a male or female if it's if we do get another female national chief, I hope that all of this infighting is gone and she is actually able to do her job and maybe bring forth and carry forth um, the vision that a lot of, that is needed in this position and in this role. Yeah. There is a lot of people, okay. No, no, please continue, Carrie. You said there are a lot of people. There's a lot of people that have um, pulled away from the AFM, specifically because there's a lot of First Nations that are becoming more independent, becoming sovereign nations, and are able to negotiate. At one time, the AFN was a very valuable resource because it, it took all everyone's voices and they were able to lobby for changes and lobby on behalf of all First Nations. But now we're in a, in a, in a different place and a different time. And we see more independence and we see more First Nations tending to pull away from AFN because they don't see their vision reflected in what the AFN is doing. And so maybe one day they will be able to um, unite all First Nations again because I think a united voice is a stronger voice. But right now um, we're seeing a lot less um, support for AFN. What do you think, Harry, needs to be done to repair these divisions within the AFN going forward? I think there has to be a lot of community engagement. You know, the AFN has to come back to the community, the grassroots community, and find out what is needed. What do they need to do? They have been working and proposing a lot of... of um, amendments and things they're working on, I think right now they need to go back to the grassroots, back to where they started and find out what the people want. What do the First Nations need? And and start from there. I think it's it's start. they have to start from scratch or, re, or totally revamp the organization and not call themselves a national chief and rather move into more of an executive role like um, maybe have a president instead of a national chief. Mm. Lots to come on this story for sure. Carrie Benjo is a longtime Indigenous journalist in Regina. She joined us from there tonight.